Good morning, folks. I so love showing kids the sun and teaching them about sunspots and solar flares. They are enthusiastic, they have questions, and you can tell when the spark comes on in a child, thanks to Mike Leffler and Blue Oak Elementary for a very fun event. Of course, while I was playing Mr. Rogers, the sun was going ham. After days without flaring, we had 6 to 8 M-class solar flares yesterday, depending on how you count double peaks. The eruptions on the incoming limb definitively produced ejecta, big CMEs. You don't even need the coronagraph to tell. The departing limb offered virtually no ejected mass from the corona, however, just surges and flashes. Here are the coronagraphs anyway, showing the CMEs. Now we should also be expecting tropical storm upticks after this kind of solar flaring. Right now I'm watching strengthening in three different systems to the south here. As of this morning, the Joint Typhoon Warning Center is already looking at one of those storms. I think the coming days will provide a lot more. Let's take a look at sunspots because these main earth-facing spots were not our showstoppers yesterday. The positive umbras with any significant power up here are too far afield of the big leading negative umbras. And when we come to the center disk spots, Let's first watch the last 36 hours and note how the new group in the lead is also spreading fast. Right now, the magnetic fields of that new spot are partially confined between the spreading spots, but if the negative extends too far left to the outer positive spot behind, it will begin stealing the connections. This little guy up here, amazingly, is what gave us those CMEs. Looking at the solar wind, I see a coronal hole stream, and that's about it. If that little density chirp is the CME that Noah expected, it is pitiful, and if not, then their arrival time analysis was flawed. We'll see. Magnetic shield, doing all right this morning. Down south, the coronal hole extension looks minimal and very limited, but in fact, the coronal magnetic fields are extending it at the moment, and we already have power readings coming in north of the equator from that southern opening. It is Earth Day today and the heavens will celebrate by peeking out the Lyrid meteor shower tonight. Should be enough to make it worth your while. Downgrade fest yesterday at the USGS. Here's a good example where a 5.1 rang at 5.1 only once and had the rest of the readings much higher, up to 6.0. Got a couple stories today. First is the soil moisture mapping in the most recent developments there. This comes from NASA and link is below. Also got a bit on how rapid scat is changing the way we understand the winds of tropical storms. Both articles are recommended. Folks, the clock has officially started on booking for observing the frontier. Last night, the NFL announced that the Steelers do have a home game that weekend, so hotel prices at the event and surrounding places will begin to trend upward as demand for rooms increases. I think Steinbacher's coming too, by the way. Let's run the weather. Low up north draws a convergence down through the eastern states that wraps into another flow, heading for a low that will develop in the south. The rain and storms won't be missing on that first convergence line out east, but the southern storms will be far more severe tonight. In Europe, high pressure node still clearing the center cut of the continent while the northern end still drives moisture to the east, and a collision point of air masses is seen developing to the south as well. Those two areas are where we find the clouds most prevalent. Down under. Tropical storms or not, these lows are putting in work. Connection to convergence lines shooting south even where it does not appear they should. We've essentially just got two moisture flows here, one of which is getting ready to hit New Zealand soon. You've got your current conditions and shots of our star to close. Next public event for the Mobile Observatory is PrepperCon this weekend in Salt Lake City. Eyes open. No fear. It's 3.15 a.m. in California, and that's the news. Be safe, everyone.